in this house who is going to share the word with us. Amen. Amen. This is youth month, isn't it? And the young people are rising for the glory of Jesus. And they are raised by God himself for his glory and for the future of the church. Because Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That is why you see the church continuing from generation to generation. Because Mudimu Agaseleke to to continue and do his work. Amen. So now, um, <clears throat> Brother Moloko is our preacher for today. Um, he was here a few years back uh, as a student here. And he came to attend. He made a connection. He even got a wife. Praise God. So that's how powerful the connection was. And it must be that powerful. Praise the Lord. So please put your hands together. Let's welcome Muluko. Rampia Piedi to come and share the word with us today. Amen. Galabora Murudi for this opportunity to come and share the word of God with the church this morning. Hallelujah. Lemma Murudi. They are loving people. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning we are talking about the presence of God. Amen. And I know this is Muruti's favorite subject. He taught us the presence of God. And how to practice the presence of God. Amen. If there is a man that I know who loves the presence of God, it's this one. Amen. The 
presence of God. Hallelujah. Mopedu ori, your presence is heaven to me. Ori, in your presence, oh Lord, I want to be in your presence. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray this morning that you anoint my lips of clay to utter as the oracles of God. Only you can talk to your people. You know them. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about the presence of God. And if you were in Jimiston last week, you'll bear with me because this is what we were talking about uh, last week. I'm just going to repeat it word by word, line by line. I'm not omitting anything. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm talking about the presence of God. You see, the life of a fish is in the water. If you want to kill a fish, you don't need a poison. You don't need a knife. All that you need to do is to take it out of water. And within a few seconds, it will be dead. So, the life of a child of God is in the presence of God. Once you leave the presence of God, you die spiritually. Hallelujah. Amen. Past two or three years, we know COVID-19, many people lost jobs. Many people died. People are going through depression. Others are suicidal. How do you survive this whole thing without the presence of God? Because David says, you have showed me the path of life. In your presence, there is the fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Do you want pleasure? It is in the presence. People go all over the world looking for pleasure. But pleasure or true pleasure is in the presence of God. Adam and Eve were, were living in the Garden of Eden. So the Garden of Eden is a picture of the presence of God. The name Eden means a place of pleasure. A place of abundance. It means paradise. The presence of God. They were living in the presence of God. But the Bible says the enemy does not come except to kill, steal, and destroy. He saw them enjoying themselves in the presence of God. You know, among others, there are two things that the presence of God does in your life. Transformation. And impartation. Transformation. And impartation. And the opposite is also true. When you, you fellowship with the devil. There is transformation. And impartation. That is a demonic impartation. But we are not talking about that. Today we are talking about the presence of God. What the presence of God does in our life. Transformation and impartation that happens when we are in the presence of God. So they were fellowshipping with God in the garden of Eden. They will hear the voice of the Lord moving in the garden. Now, the, the devil takes the form of a snake. And he goes to them. Now we see demonic fellowship. which I say also bring impartation. God told them to eat every tree in the garden except the one in the middle. But now, the devil comes, he fellowship with them. And they listen to him. And they eat. The Bible says immediately after eating, when they looked at that tree, it looked attractive. It was not so before the devil came. After fellowshipping with the devil, now they see, they, they see things differently. Literally, she got a little bit of 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 a little bit
This is what the demonic fellowship does. After fellowshipping with the devil, it looks attractive because of fellowship. Impartation just happened. You cannot go to demonic churches and think you'll see things the same. There's going to be impartation. You, think, you see things differently. Now this tree looks attractive because the devil spoke. They fellowship with him. And we know God catch them in pain. You'll give birth a woman, a man will eat I understand that. But the painful part to me is when God banished them from the garden. It's when God takes them out of the garden, out of Eden, out of his presence, because I believe that that is where death happens. I think that happened when they were taken out of the presence of God. Like when you take fish out of the water. One day King David, the Bible says, was walking on the roof. And he saw a woman bathing Bathsheba. And he called her, he slept with her. She became pregnant. His husband, her husband, Uriah, was in a battle. And he realized that this woman is pregnant. He sent a message so that the Uriah can be called. And he comes, he said, go into your house. He knows that if he goes into the house, obviously he'll sleep with his wife. So that he can conceal this pregnancy. And the man did not go. He refused. He slept outside his door. Following day, he gave him alcohol so that maybe he can be drunk and go into his house. He did not go. And he realizes that weeks are going. I think it's first trimester or something. <laughs> then he writes a letter and he gives Uriah to go and give the com a commander of the soldiers in the battle. And it's written that when the battle is fierce, you must put him where he's vulnerable. And he did that. And Uriah was killed. And God sent a prophet, Nathan, to him. And he tell him that there were two men. This one was rich. He had so many cattle and all that. And there was another man who had only one lamp. The rich man had visitors. He went out to take the one lamp of this guy. He killed it and he fed his visitors. If it was you, that David, that man must be killed. Then prophet, or that man is you. Dafida, or Mudim, Psalm chapter fifty-one. Don't take your spirit from me. Don't cast me out of your presence. David knows the implications of losing the presence of God. He knows that once you leave the presence of God, you die. Like Adam and Eve. You die. I know that I've sinned against you, but please don't take your spirit from me. Don't cast me out of your presence. Because I know that in your presence there is the fullness of joy. The joy that I want is in your presence. If you kick me out of your presence, where am I going to find joy? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Why will I find strength out, out of your presence? Don't take me out of your presence. Mutimur David is a man after my own heart. Because David loves the presence of God. Or one thing have I desired of the Lord. He says one thing. 
if you can just be exposed to the presence of the Lord, the list is too long. We want so many things. One thing. I just want one thing. Because this one thing, if I can have it, I'll have everything. I just want one thing. Say, for example, this is the Garden of Eden. Where there is everything. And I'm out of the door. Then, I'm outside or I'm at the gate. Maybe I'm Pavoroto. After a few hours, I'm going to ask, ask, and ask. But, well, you know what I, I, I need to do? Go hurry. Go hopella entrance. I just want access. Just open for me. Because when I'm inside, I know that it is right. And there are pleasures forevermore. Our problem is we want to be outside, but we want the things of God. We want the things of God, but we don't want him. We don't want to come closer. We want his cars, but we don't want him. We want his houses, but we don't want him. And one thing that I desire. Hallelujah. He wants to be close to him. He who dwells in the sacred place. A, the presence of God is a dwelling. It's not a place where you, you come in and go out. It's a dwelling. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. I'm still talking about the presence of God. The fullness of joy. In the Garden of Eden, the Bible says there was a there was a river that was going in there, and it, it goes into four. Another one is called Havila. In the land of Havila, the Bible says the gold there was good. The gold there was good. With the precious stone, and it says with a rare perfume. These are the things that happens in the presence of God. Adam and Eve had access to all these things in the presence of God in the Garden of Eden. Or don't cast me out of your presence. Hallelujah. If your presence does not go with us, do not allow us to leave this place. If your presence does not go with us, don't allow me to take another step. If your presence does not go with me, don't allow me to enter into this business transaction. If your presence does not go with me, don't allow me to go into this marriage. If your presence does not go with me, don't allow us to leave this place. We want your presence. My presence will go with you. My presence will give you rest. Not only the presence of God goes with you, it, 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 it also gives you rest. We rest in the presence of God. My presence will go with you. My presence will give you rest. During these difficult times in the world, in our country, a lot is going on. People are suicidal. But the presence, we need the presence. We're in your presence, Lord, I want to be in your presence. Hallelujah. We were supposed to read from the book of John chapter 1 verse 1. 
I'm so excited because I love the president. And I'm not going to be long. I, do, I don't have many words. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. When? In the beginning. In the beginning there, it refers to the eternity past. Not when heaven and earth were formed. No, no, no. In the eternity past. Because God exists out of time. Time was made for me and you. Time is in the hands of God. So in the eternity past was the word. And the word there refers to Jesus in his glorified body. So in the eternity past was Jesus in his glorified body. And the word was with God. There is a fellowship. The word was in the presence of God. In the eternity past. And it continued to say, and the word was God. The word was God. The word was God because he was with God. You did not get that. I say the word was God because he was with God. Because you cannot fellowship with God and not be like him. Because in fellowship, there is impartation. That's why Jesus says, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. You cannot separate us. We are one thing. Because of fellowship from the eternity past. The only time Jesus lost this fellowship, it was when he was on the cross because he was made sin and God could not look into that sin. That's why he said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabagatan. My Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? Because well, for the first time he was losing the fellowship that he had with his father from the eternity past. How do we go on and on without the presence of the Lord? Jesus could not take it even for a second. Why have you forsaken me? It was so painful for him to be out of fellowship. I'm talking about the presence. The presence of God. If you take this water, the same water, and you pour it inside a circle container. The same water is going to take the, the shape of this container. You take the same water again. You pour it inside a square-shaped container. The same water is going to take the shape of this container. You take the same water again, pour it in a triangle-shaped container. It's going to take that form. This is what happens when we go into the presence of God. We begin to take the shape of God. That's why you can take a prostitute and put her into the presence of God. She's going to take the form of God. You take a murderer, you place him inside the presence of God, he takes the shape of God. That is a transformation. Paul the apostle, he was persecuted, Saul was persecuting the church of God. One day on his way to Damascus, he met God. And his life was changed forevermore. That is the same man who wrote so many epistles in the Bible because of that encounter. The presence of God. Brings transformation. As we behold. With, an, with our unveiled faces. As in a class. Beholding the glory of God. We are transformed into the same image. We are changed. When we come into the presence of God. 
Hallelujah. The Bible says there was a man who had two sons. The younger son says to the father, give me my portion, my inheritance. And the Bible says his father gave him, he went into a far country. This father is a picture of God. So this son was in the presence of the father. And as long as he was in the presence of the father, it was well with him. Food was there. Protection. Everything was there in the presence of the father. But he gave him his inheritance. The Bible says he left to a far country. He left the presence of the father. And the Bible says he lost everything. And he was given a job to look after the pigs. You see what happens when you leave the presence of God. You eat with the pigs. Shame follows you. Now he's out of fellowship. All of a sudden he's poor. But the Bible says he came back to his senses. He says I will arise. And go back to the father. And I will say to my father. I have sinned against heaven and you. And his father saw him coming from a distance. That's how much God wants to fellowship with us. When we are afar, it doesn't please him. He wants us close. The Bible says he ran to him. You see, all of a sudden, there is a provision. He gave him a, 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 a garment. He slaughtered a cattle for him. All of a sudden, because he's back in fellowship, there is provision. All these things could not happen in the absence of the father. It doesn't matter how much his father loved him. There was no way he was going to provide for somebody who's out of fellowship. But when he came back to fellowship, all of a sudden there is provision. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. You don't get this thing when you are far. All of a sudden, there's slaughter. All of a sudden, there is food, there is protection. Everything is, is coming together because it's in fellowship. There are two types of backsliders. There are those who backslide once God blesses them like a prodigal son. They've been praying for so many years for God to bless them. Now he gave them whatever they want. They go to a far country. And there is another group that leaves the presence when they don't have anything. I mean, God, I've been praying for job. I've been praying for house and this and that. It doesn't happen. They leave. Like a Elimelech. The Bible says there was a famine in the land. Hallelujah. And Elimelech took his family. They went to Moab, which is a picture of the world. The Bible says after 10 years he died. This is what happens when you leave the presence of God. You die. Not only him and his sons. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the presence. And I'm about to close. The Bible says come boldly before the throne of grace. Come how boldly. In the past, a priest will go into the tabernacle once a year to, he, to plead for himself and the children of Israel. And there was no guarantee that when you go in there, you were going to come back alive. They will take a rope and tie your feet, your leg. So that if God kills you, they can pull you back. Hallelujah. Because not, not everyone was allowed there. But when Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says a veil, there was a curtain, a thick curtain, was broken from top to bottom. 
Now it's open. We can all come boldly, not like a priest who was fearful that the presence of God was going to kill him, but now we come boldly because the veil is broken. Now we have access into the presence of God. Now we have fellowship with God. We can go into his presence and fellowship with him. He says, come boldly. Don't run away. If you feel like maybe you offended God, the Bible says, come boldly before the throne of grace. Come back to fellowship. Come boldly before the throne of grace. The Bible says Mount Sinai was covered with smoke, thunders, that the children of Israel cannot even go near. But the Bible says we have come to Mount Zion in the company of the innumerable angels, the church of the firstborn. Now we have fellowship with God because the, the curtain is broken. We can walk with God. David says, don't take your spirit from me. Don't cast me out of your presence because your presence keep me sane. In your presence, there is the fullness of joy. Moshe Ori, if I am your friend, if you are pleased with me, show me your glory. Show me your face. The Bible says God revealed his, his works to the children of Israel, but his ways to Moses. The children of Israel only saw the hand of God opening the Red Sea. They saw God raining manna from heaven. They saw God giving them water in the wilderness. But they did not see who was giving them those things. That is a recipe for deception. Because even the devil can perform signs and wonders. Devil can give you influence. That's why he says to Jesus, if you can bow down to me, I'll give you all these things. So we are not going to relate with God on his hand. On what he can do. But we relate with him on his face. Yes, we want miracles. We want cars. We want all these things. But we, we want to know the source of these things. Because even the devil can do these things. If you relate with God because he can give you a car, that is a low level. Because the devil can give you even a bigger car. But we want those cars. We want all those things. But we want to know the source. We want to be exposed to the source. Moses says, if you are pleased with me, if I am your, I'm your friend, then show me your face. It's not enough that you gave me a car, a house, and all these things. I want them. But show me yourself. Show me your presence. This man is making difficult requests. Show me your face. And you can't see my face and leave. I'm going to put my hand on your face so that I can pass. So that you can see my back. I'm talking about the presence. Or if your presence does not go with us, don't allow us to leave this place. And we know how God led them. The Bible says during the day, he led them with the, uh, cloud, uh, the, the pillar of cloud. And at night with the pillar of fire. The fellowship was there during the day and at night. It was there at all the times. Find yourself in the presence of God all the times. Fellowship with God all the time. Don't lose the presence. You can lose all these things, but don't lose the presence. Because if you have the presence, you have everything. Because everything is in the presence. That's why the devil does not want to see a church that walks in the presence of God. The presence of God brings transformation and impartation. Moses' fellowship with God 
And when he came out of the mountain, the Bible says his face was shining that the children of Israel could not look at him. This is what happens when you look at God. That reflection comes back to you. Do you think if the children of Israel could, could not look at him, the devil could? Once we lose the presence, we are left with what is called Ichabod. The glory, the presence of God has left. Then we begin to do things with our strength. The presence. What in your presence? Lord, I want to be in your presence. Hallelujah. My presence will go with you. As a strong tower, my presence 